The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Eugene Monroe released by the Ravens last week. He says he believes that it's because he's been very outspoken oh, about, we're taking a dig about, I know, there. about <laughs> wanting medical it's marijuana to be a viable there. option. And now, there are reasons. There are salary cap reasons. There are a million reasons yes. why. So no matter what you believe, let's go to this issue of medical marijuana yep. in the NFL, which would mean removing it from the ban. There are a place. few states that allow medicinal marijuana cannabinoids, etc. Yeah. But also explain that it's, you're not smoking it, you're rubbing exactly. it on. And right? I had a conversation with Eugene a couple of weeks ago. He's not a pothead. You know, he doesn't right. smoke weed and he's looking for an exa- a reason or, or clearance to be able to smoke marijuana because it makes him feel better from all the poundings. We all know the micro concussions that happen with offensive linemen. We see the bigger ones. Those are the ones we talk about. But the, mi- the offensive linemen have it in serious uh, uh, depth because of all the hits they take. And he sees this as a viable way to treat this long term for current and former athletes and he want, all he wants to do is the NFL to look at it. His own money he took out of his pocket and he, he commissioned a study. The NFL kind of went along with him but then he gets cut. Do I think he was cut because he's the first current player to speak out against this ban on marijuana? No. Injuries, attrition, that probably led more to it than this but it creates a coincidence and, a, and an idea for for conspiracy, uh, especially if he puts it out there. But what about this idea of having marijuana removed from the banned substance list? There are more than half the it teams. Should be. For more it than half be. the teams in the NFL right now, it's legal in their states. That alone. But the idea of medical marijuana in concussion treatment, mm-hmm. in CTE treatment, chronic pain management. There's several studies. Don't these players that are behind it, because I know there's some former players that mm-hmm. are, don't they have a point? But I think the issue is what happens if it is legalized and then players start smoking it for recreational reasons. I think that's where the fine but line is. But it's legal in so many about, states. About, I know about, performance But what about drinking even. alcohol for recreational reasons, right? <laughs> right. The, I mean. So here's my point. This is the way I look at it. As we're dealing with pain, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a really big issue. Um, so can't we start to look at pain and management of pain differently um, and take all the drugs out of it and start to figure out how these players can heal themselves differently, be healthy the best way possible? Because I know if Dara and I, if we're swimming and we have chronic pain as opposed to traumatic pain, we can't even take Advil yeah. because if we go out there and train in pain, it's just going to get worse. I remember there was a moment midway through my career where our head uh, trainer came in and said, we're going to start taking blood tests because we want to uh, track the effect that these painkillers, indocin, naproxen, whatever, whatever, Tordal, whatever, Tordal, yeah. whatever it may be, is having on your liver. From that point oh, on, yeah. I stopped. <laughs> I, I wanted to feel my pain from then on because right, of the right. dangers of some of these opioids. Smart. Cannabinoids, however, mm-hmm. are likely not as dangerous and maybe provide as much or even more of a benefit to current athletes who are traumatized right. on Sunday afternoon. This is not going to go away. This is going to be another very big issue for the NFL. I have I no agree. doubt about that. It's the Full Metal Show. Are you high? I what are you high. talking about? This is the Full Metal Show. Give me a break. The Full Melt Show. A marijuana discussion about news, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. All right, we're back on the air. Uh, After some extended time off. And we've missed so much. So I'm a little bit remiss because I really, really... I am excited about the stuff that's happened on uh, one hand. One hand. Not, not much bad stuff to have. It's all definitely more good stuff than bad. No question about that. But, uh, so we'll get to in a minute why we've been off the air for a bit. Because, I don't know, people have got to be wondering. Uh, but just in referring back to this NFL thing. And by the way, we got some news coming up. We're going to recap a bunch of the stuff that uh, happened while we were off the air because a lot of shit happened while we were off the air. That being said, the piece there at the beginning, uh, which is, uh, uh, oh, see, now I'm going to now I'm, I'm going to be uh, remiss. As to, okay, so, so that was by CBS Sports at CBSSports.com. I, I couldn't remember the source where I got that audio from. And um, 
So this this clip, when I saw it today in the news, because it's a couple days old, actually, that clip. Um, in fact, this was uh, from uh, July 18th. So what is it, a day old? I think it's only a day old. It's two days old. So um, uh, when I saw that clip in the news, I, I was like, oh, man, I, I wish... I was, this is one of these days where I was like, oh, I'm not going to be on the air and I can't talk about this. It's been a chase of mine for a bit of time to get a professional sports player of any realm, of, of, of any team, of any city on the air to talk about cannabis in sports because... Well, I mean, it's just right there in your face. This business about, I mean, uh, so before I dive into that topic, because I, I just, I feel like I want to bounce this off some people. And, and so we get the phone lines open. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I'll tr- see if I can find that phone number because we've got the 800 number off and I'm going to have to give you a different number to call the studio now if you want to call. I don't anticipate that's going to happen today, but uh, just in case. So, um... I'd like to introduce to you uh, uh, somebody new to the show, and uh, now what? No, no, I forgot already what what, what I'm calling you. It's it's <laughs> ma- ma- master master. What is now it? We're we're gonna go with the Mad Blaster. Mad Mad. That's right, Mad. By it's night, Mad Mad Blaster by night. We all gotta work a nine to five. So it's, so it's Mad Blaster by night. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So th- this um this business uh, just so to explain to you this business about. The way that professional sports has approached the subject, especially of cannabis, but drugs in general, um, is disingenuous. But like on its face, this is nothing but about trying to maintain the good face of a family-friendly uh, uh, sport, and also to, to to maintain the integrity of the game. Because you know, uh, like in the Olympics, you don't want you don't want people doping. Yeah, for, you don't want anybody. Having but there's a difference that. between doping and I'm I'm taking something for because I've got a issue, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I definitely don't think that you know professional athletes out there that have to you know put on million dollar equipment to you know protect themselves should uh, be stuck using you know holistic methods. You know some. Well, well, no, that's not that's not my point. My point was, and my question is, do do, do you think that um, um, the the idea that you need something medically? For, even if it's just something from uh, some pharmaceutical, if you need a pharma- pharmaceutical for a medical reason, it, it's it's got to be. I mean, I'm not familiar enough with the uh, guidelines for the NFL with regards to drugs on this specific topic. But I would assume that if you're taking some pain medication from some injury that you've got going on, and they take these opiates all the time, and these guys are under pain control. Yeah, prescription pharmaceutical pain control. Uh huh. Um, this isn't. They don't, they're not calling this performance enhancing, although it is because otherwise you'd be in pain and couldn't do it. Yeah, right? you'd be feeling numb. So to me, to me, it's performance enhancing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, I could, but, I could see what you, where you're seeing that, getting that, uh, that same idea from. I mean, if you're not able to feel the the linebacker cross in the offensive line, dude, it's right. If you're getting, if you're getting, if you're getting shot in, in in the knee by some doctor on the sidelines with something that's going to numb the pain from your muscle or tendon tearing. So that you can get that playoff, because we need it now. Take one for the team, because that's what happens in these games. I mean, let's let's just pull the skirt back and look under there and see what's under there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's real. I mean, I guess you know, I don't, I don't see why we don't already go to marijuana as a more fucking uh, family friendly, you know, resort when it comes to that. Because I mean, that just I mean, that that's not right. That's that's numbing right on the sideline, right as the game's going on. You know what I mean? You might want to uh, hold that mic a little closer. Oh, there you go. And also, be, be careful about rattling that mic around because it's going to make a bunch of mic noise. I don't have a mic stand for you, I so he's, he's hanging on. No, it's just all good. Hanging out. So, so I'm not even trying to get to the marijuana subject yet. I'm just trying to talk about drugs in general as is viewed by the NFL. I'm still back. You're, you're like, getting the cart way up there. Huh? Hey, man, I just... I'm we, close. We, I'm we still already, the, we already established the fact that, you know, any sort of drug that's... You know, I, I feel like if you're not able to feel pain or something that's going on, that's, yeah, you're right. That, that's enhancing. You're enhancing your performance right there. Right. But So there's, there's a little bit disingenuous about their drug policy on the, from just that standpoint. Yeah. But this is, this is definitely performance enhancing. Uh-huh. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't be doing it. And if we were going to need to do it, we'd probably haul them off the field to do this. If indeed it wasn't performance enhancing, right? Why wouldn't you just take them off the field? And I mean, at that, at that point, why, would, why wouldn't there just be an age limit? Why wouldn't it be if you can't? 
you know, it would almost be like an insurance checkup. Oh, you know, what, what's your medical history if you're going to cause issues like this? If there's going to be no performance enhancing, that's the kind of... Uh, that's the kind of alternative well, you're looking at. You I'm, know what per- I mean? I'm pretty sure in the Olympics you would be disqualified because of your medical situation. They'd say, "Look, it's yeah. still performance yeah, enhancing." Yeah, that's, that's exactly this what is I'm a saying. measure. This is a measure of of massive human feat. You're with not, the best people in the world. You're not a physical capacity to right. play the if sport. You, if you need this drug for some other medical condition, be in the game. You're not qualified because it is performance enhancing in nature. Yeah, I mean, I just think that's the way it goes. <laughs> and and if you are listening and you disagree with me, let me know. Tell me. Tell me otherwise. Because I, I think that's my, I haven't looked that up. I'm just speaking off the cuff. Yeah. No. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna approach one of them, you might as well attack them as a whole. Per, uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs and all such all sorts of drugs, painkillers, opiates. You know. So we got about a minute and a half before the break hits. So um, I, I I I'm just thinking in the long run, not only do you have this disingenuous view of of sports in general, because again, the more family friendly they can keep it. And, and the more legit they can keep it from the standpoint of per- performance enhancing or whether or not these people are effed up while they're on the field, because that's what they're really looking at in the larger scale. They don't want m- mom and dad at home to explain to the kids watching the sports game on TV that these guys are somehow not effed up because they clearly are, and they know they are. I mean, is it also all right to kind of give off the sort of image that, uh, you know, explain to the children that just because you're in pain you need to... You know, take this injection of pain killing, numbing. You know what I or mean? Just a, or just, or just, just yeah, orally no, take these medications. But exactly. still, if you're on massive opiates for some injury, and they're just trying to keep you off the injured list, right? Yeah. Um, come on, you're being disingenuous about the purpose of that medication and that man remaining on the field. Yeah. Um, this isn't helping the man, and it's not helping the team in the long run because he's likely to get injured under those conditions, in my opinion, as a layperson, as a spectator. And I'm not a big sports fan, mind you. Yeah. I'm just saying from the medical standpoint. Now, that really quickly before we hit break, then you've got this whole – so this is wrapping up this whole thing about this guy in the news because he's one of these first big guys from the NFL sticking their neck out and saying, this is the first guy that's still playing that's saying this. All the other guys are, like, already off the field. <laughs> They're already, you know, in some way no longer play. Here they are actually saying that, look, this needs to change, and here's why. And, and we've talked about this before on the air. They, they cannot field a team unless they let them use marijuana. And here's the thing. Here's how they get around it. The players' union agreement says that you get tested once a year, right? You get tested one time a year. And it's right It's during when everybody's together during practice. But it, it's preseason practice, right? That's when you get tested. If you're clean then, you get to keep going on for the rest of the year until this time again next year. But if you're dirty, now we're going to have to test you. So everybody turns up clean for that one month, and then they all get tested together, and then la-di-da, we can use our marijuana the rest of the season. Ha! You're getting the full melt. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the Allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, it's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Ledoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Ledoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. 
we stand up with you. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that as traders we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. We need coffee. Got it right here. Cups. 12 ounce, 8 ounce recyclable creamers, sweeteners, stirrers, filters. Creamers, sweeteners, stirrers, filters, cake cups. Hazelnut, French vanilla, French roast, dark, light, medium, bold, extra bold. And decaf. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? No reason. Free shipping for awards members every day. Staples, make more happen. It's the Bull Belt Radio Show. Radio Show. All my friends are even take it slow. Wait for them to ask you who you know. Please don't make All right, so why have we been off the air? I mean, that's, that's, that's really the 800-pound gorilla in the room, isn't it? At least right now. Usually it's the FBI or the DEA or somebody like that, but I don't know. So I'm here with uh, Mad, Mad Blaster by Night. Yep, that's me. I'm mad. You're mad. <laughs> yeah, I'm mad. <laughs> don't don't get mad. Get glad. <laughs> Turn that frown upside down. So, um, this uh, this show predicates on obvious uh, basics, like perhaps my availability. And um. Although I'm happy to say, so there's good news and bad here's news here about my recent availability. The bad news, no, I'll give you the good news first. The good news is that my recent unavailability wasn't because I was locked up in some way. Uh, th- th- that No criminal charges here, guys. <laughs> I'm just saying, it wasn't that. Although this was court involved, but not in a criminal way, in a <clears throat> civil way. Sibilance. You need the mic check. Sibilance. 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 Anyway, um, this whole business about service dog, right? And and I I what I don't want to do in this show, at least, is turn a segment like this into a show about something like that. Because I could do a whole several shows about service dog stuff. Yep. No, this is cannabis over here, buddy. But I'm just saying, as it relates to <laughs> The reason of my disavailability or unavailability is to, to put it more properly is because this this dog that I acquired uh, for a balance and mobility issue has been the source of legal pain in the anus. So what I, what I, what I mean by that is, and I hope I hope the people that are involved with this are listening. Uh, whether they're listening now or probably not, but later I'm, they may well listen to this show. If they find out I'm doing this show, they're likely to tune in out of curiosity of nothing else. So if you're involved in any of that litigation, they're trying to evict me for my service dog. The big bad landlord is coming to throw you on your ass because you've got a big mean service dog. He's so mean. He's sitting over there sleeping with cats. They're all curled up on him like a big soft canine pillow go get him chase yep no nope. no nope. just gonna lay there yep oh you just cute little stomach <laughs> dog you ain't gonna hurt it's, nobody it's, it's funny because and i won't get into the whole story because it's way too uh, long and involved and boring but um there was a time where i had to meet with the with the landlord the landlord dun 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 oh now i get i have to do this now oh wait a minute see now you'll find a reason to, oh go hang oh golly i'm gonna look it up well this, I've got, can you, you guys take, got him excited. Take, yeah, well, it's, it's easily done. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. <laughs> you, you can take that any way you like. <laughs> so, um, here we go. Um, I'm just going <laughs> to... I bet you if I look it up this way... <laughs> oh, he's got it, guys. He's on the technology right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at this up in a hilarious way, and I'll bet you. <laughs> yeah. It's not All right, that so funny. so this it is funny because uh, this is so old. Uh, this predates you, mad, mad. So I'm gonna play this clip, and this is just for uh, comedy's sake. So I, I don't know if it's gonna make me if it's gonna make me watch a commercial. We won't do it. So here we go. Is it gonna do it? Let's see what happens. Wait, wait, all right, wait a minute. 
So wait a minute. I'm sure there's got to be a better version of this than this. Uh, this is this is this is terrible. Uh, old. Um, so I'm gonna look this up in a different way. I, I actually looked this up. Okay, I'll t- oh, you gotta wait until you hear the whole thing before I tell you how I looked it up because that's the only way it'll be funny. Uh, that's actually a piece from Eddie Murphy back in the '80s on Saturday Night Live, and this was a little sketch. This was just like a little film fill-in piece. It was just filler. Uh, but it's so funny. <laughs> the piece is called Kill My Landlord. <laughs> and it's so fitting for this whole... Okay, so that's there's that one. Oh, it's, it's a transcript. Damn it. Let me see if it's under videos. Anybody paying attention right now, this is why you uh, pick I, out your I, I just don't want... I just don't want to... Okay, so... Um, so let's see if uh, this is any better. You know that's that's this is some other band or something. No, damn it! So all the pieces because it looks like Saturday Night Live never actually put a clip of this up. So this is actually off of somebody's TV or something, and it's terrible. Um, I'm just gonna see if these are by different people because there's three of them here that I see. I gotta play it just because it's so funny. It, but that was terrible audio. Let's see if there's a better version of this. Oh, that's not that one. Let's try that one. Here we go. See, this is what works. Each year, Rockland sponsors a poetry festival. Tyrone Green is this year's winner. So, so wait, 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 I had to interrupt it for a second because this, none of this makes any sense unless you under because this is video, obviously. This is yeah. TV. None of this makes sense unless you understand that this clip <coughs> is obviously prison poetry. Okay, this is. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, okay, so hang on. Here we go. Each year, Rockland sponsors a poetry festival. Tyrone Green is this year's winner. Sorry. That's the piece. I mean, it's. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Oh, I almost... I'm so sorry. I screwed that up. Hang on. <laughs> so that's how I looked it up. He spells it at the end C I L L. My landlord, and that's how I looked it up on Google, and it gave me that original one, but it was terrible audio. So I just thought that the dog barking, do he bite? Because that's, you know, they're trying to say I have a big, mean, vicious dog. And it's because of his breed. Oh, oh look at the party faux pas. Right? This is this is your duty, held, not mine. You held that forever. I did. I get lost. I'll All get right. lost in a sea of verbiage. Do you, do you want me to keep, like, a fly swatter on hand or something? Just... That, that could be handy. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, just you give, went, me this, give me the off, smack. You went off there for a minute, man. Just give me the smack, and I'll oh, be like, right oh. On the, right on the back of the head. It's okay, guys. I'll keep them in line I'll, next time. I I'll, promise. I'll, I'll keep dash them. back to the center of the... Uh, keep one know. on deck. Keep Come it on. Jermaine Green. Come on. All right. So, um... C-I-L, my landlord. Have you ever heard that sketch before? No, I, See, can't, I can't say I have. See, for me, it's this is how old I am. For me, this is, you know, popular culture. I mean, now you're just killing it, making it seem like I'm super young now. That's that's not necessary. I'm just saying I'm super old, probably. Gotcha. More, that's probably more what I'm saying. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, th- that's what's been going on. There's been some civil litigation uh, involving eviction, and it's been five long, terrible months. But, fee fi fo fum I chased the giant back up the tree, you know, back up into the clouds on the beanstalk. 
Um, we'll see what happens because I hear rumblings in the clouds that he may be sliding back down that stalk. And I would be chopping it down with an axe were it not for the fact that he took it with him. So, if that kind of nutshells it all into one descriptive picture, there you go. That's what's going on. So we've been off. The, I've been off the air because uh, it's really hard to uh, field guests and um, do all the stuff that's necessary to put this production on. Here, I'm doing it again. He hands it off to me with a PP. What is it? It's the PPP thing, right? The puff puff pass. What? Yeah, yeah. It, well, yeah. PPP. Yeah. What? You down with PPP? <clears throat> Yeah, I, yeah, you know me. Never mind. <laughs> you're making it weird, man. It is. It's always weird. So, um, if you're not, you're not good with weird. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite all right with weird. All right, as long as you don't take personal offense. Yeah, not in the slightest. Yeah, it's hard to offend me. You know, it really is. I got a thick skin. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. <laughs> People underestimate the thickness of the skin all the time. They're like, ugh, da 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 da, and I'm like. Pum, 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 pum. And like, oh, what, what is this? Some sort of like greaser musical? Are people snapping and swinging chains? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, <laughs> yeah, just like, you know, they, 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 they're trying to hit me and I just like absorb it. And they're like, oh, wait a minute. Are you with the sharks? No. I don't think you know the movie reference. Yeah, dude, I do know the movie. Look, I took high school. You know. I, I took high school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What the? <laughs> I took high school. <laughs> Fuck, even I took high school. <laughs> Well, that's all high school shit. I mean, if you don't know those references, the, the greasers and all that stuff. That's okay. Yeah, it's I all mean, high school, high school literature stuff. I was just going. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you know that's how it went. You brought your Broadway. Uh, I brought the pizzazz. Your Broadway pizzazz. I was here tapping to, the toes up on the stage to, here to cannabis radio. <laughs> well, that's a whole other subject, cannabis radio. Anyway, so that's why we've not been on the air, and I thought you know we we uh, better at least talk about that. Um. And at least now that that's aired, in the strangest of ways, admittedly, but it, now that it's aired, we can move along with um, the obvious remaining question, which is what the hell has been going on in the last like two and a half, three months we've been off the air? I think it's really been three months, April, May, June, July. So, so we, were, we, we, were, we were on the air in April, like just briefly for a day, uh, like a day or two. Because that's when all this crap started back in, like, January, actually. But uh, we didn't start sputtering off the air until sometime in late March. Um, and there's been a lot of crap that's happened since then. And so, I suppose... Do we, how much time do we have here? It's got, like, uh, like, it's like a couple minutes. That's, like, four minutes, actually. So, we got a little bit of time. So, why don't we, uh, in, that, in that a lot of time, kind of maybe uh, take a peek... I think I think right, right, right I was going to say let's look at some of the stuff just like look at the headlines and then we'll go kind of look on the other side of it. but uh, we don't need to go over all, all the new stuff that's happened just like today because there's an easy list here for that oh yeah what I really wanted to kind of take a peek at is some of the stuff that's happened in the past month now off the top of my head I can't think of any of them that's how preoccupied I've been with all this other crap and it's just a sea of it that you're not going to be interested in. It's unimportant. It's, un it's important to the, sh the production of this show because uh, it, it, just, it takes me from it if I have to indulge it. But um, I'm working at not having to indulge that as much as possible so that I'm available for this show because obviously I've done this program for like six years now and I'm well vested into it. And... Uh, it, it's not something that is easily, in my life, g gone without. It's become a part of my daily fare. You ever, you ever been attached to something like that uh, on, a, on a daily bas basis so long that uh, not having that attachment going forward is awkward and, uh, yeah. Similar to, like, <clears throat> having a job and then... <laughs> up, up, and, <laughs> up and being unemployed and kinda, being up yeah, every morning could, at 4 in the morning like just sitting there smoking blunts like man I should be doing something yeah it could be like that no that's exactly what it is man like um shortly after I had to get rid of my dog I uh you know it was a routine 5 in the morning you know let him out feed him oh so you I, you had to get rid of a dog oh yeah no it was uh, you know he was uh he was a guard dog and uh he 
he did his job. Somebody uh, came in the home without knocking or presenting their entrance, and he uh, he definitely was sure to uh, nip that one in the butt. And so the dog paid that price. Um, um, I mean, since I'm on here anonymous, anonymously, it really doesn't matter. Right. Uh, I was actually able to uh, get him to a humane society, and uh, they were able to put him up for adoption before anything really uh, terrible happened with the dog. So. But yeah, no, something as uh, simple as that that's part of your life every did, single did day. Did you follow that through to make sure that the dog got adopted? I didn't have uh, any of the funds, really. It well, kind of had to be an anonymous. You, you, you didn't have the means to do it, is what you're saying. Yeah, um, so I, I really See, see I couldn't even do that. I, was, I couldn't even do that. Oh, it was uh, always heartbreaking. I, it was it, not even heartbreaking to me. It's beyond heartbreaking. It would be uh, un, uh, like it would, it would screw up my every single forward-moving day. Like uh, from here until I wasn't here anymore. Well, I mean, it was... Because I would always be wondering, looking over my shoulder, what happened to that dog that I left behind there? I, I... Well, now why you got to go and do that, Steve? You know I wonder that. I love that dog. Oh, uh, I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> really, I don't, I'm so sorry I'm not trying to take it there. No, because I, I definitely... <clears throat> I do look over my shoulder every day and wonder... Good cross-check, by the way, because I was definitely not trying to take oh, that Oh, yeah, there. no, you're taking it to a dark place, man. But no, honest to God, man, it was... Uh, you know, it was a situ- situation similar to yours. You know, I, you know, eviction was on the table. Uh the dog just needed to not be on the premises and it was something as simple as my dog or a roof and that's that's no i I get you there but i just see i just couldn't have done that oh no it was terrible to believe me you uh, it was a dog that i had you know had dogs are family members i mean well and even his special you know i got him two weeks old way way earlier than you're supposed to get him he was the run of the litter you know right bottle fed him but no you, you have a complete right, right, right. correlation there with well, especially something. at that level because you know you you you, you basically nur- you finished nurturing that animal into existence yeah because no. you had to bottle feed him yeah exactly um so you've, you've got a stronger bond with the animal than you would if you just got him as a as an adult or even as a puppy because you you nurtured him he wouldn't be viable unless you gave him that nourishment in that way yeah no for sure but uh <clears throat> something that strong in your day can uh you know every every day five in the morning just getting up walking to the door kind of half asleep not really knowing what's going on and i open the door and i'm you're looking like, around yeah, like, yeah, dude, that's oh, how it is and that's how it is with the radio show yeah, with me yeah no I if the radio show isn't here i'm not fulfilling a duty that i've been ascribed you just feel like there's an empty slot in your day it's well it's, uh, the only reason i look i spend a lot of time doing this show and much of the time i do this show free i don't uh, you know I go on location and I talk about stuff and I tell people the truth about the cannabis yeah, and, and medicine. Love, out of love for the trade. No, it's out of it's out of it's out of uh, people's willingness to vastly try and uh, deceive the public. Uh, this whole the whole propaganda message that still seems to linger in various forms. People listen to and believe all the time, and I, I'm trying to prevent that from gaining any more traction than it ever had. And trying to, you know, roll the ball back up the hill now that it's a much smaller ball. Um, I feel essential in doing that because nobody else is on that front. We'll be right back after the break. You're getting the full melt. I've seen things no man should bear. And those that every man should dare. From the beaches of Normandy to the far reaches of the earth. In my life, I have lived millions of lives. I've outrun robots and danced with dinosaurs. I've faced the faces of fear and fortitude and witnessed great beauty in the making. I've kept the company of kings and queens, but I'm no royalty or saint. I've traveled, trekked, wandered, and roamed only to find myself right where I belong. Jeep. See your authorized Jeep retailer for details on how you can become a Jeep owner. We ask people to tell us something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad, yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be down times. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenges. 
Root Metrics, in the nation's largest independent study, tested wireless performance across the country. Verizon won big with 153 state wins. AT&T got 38, Sprint got 2, and T-Mobile got 0. Verizon also won first in the U.S. for data, call, speed, and reliability. AT&T got text. Stuck on an average network? Join Verizon, and we'll cover your cost to switch. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place, all solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, ordained. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy, body detox, ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to this weekly, 400 South Door Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Fort Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. 571. It's the Blue Radio Show. Radio Show. All right, so the grand question is, uh, what, have, uh, what has been going on uh, since we've been off here in the last, I don't know, three months? 90 days is a long time to be absent from a show when you've been six years. Good Lord. That's like a whole misdemeanor sentence, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it is. I didn't think about it in terms of that. Yeah, but it's like it it's is ninety days jail sentence, right? And I felt like it too, but um, you know, the, the 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 reason is is because okay, so we if you, I guess it gets a good analogy because uh, if you're in jail and you're behind the bars or the glass or whatever your containment is, you're always like, oh, I wonder what everybody else is doing today. What are, Oh, I know my friend. I know what my friends are doing. Damn it, it's Wednesday. I know what they're doing. Oh, I wish I was there. You see, you're you're pining for what's outside of your grasp, right? It, you're you're being confined to this place, and you you can't take part of normal. So you got that going on, and that's that's how it is with me with the show. Oh, the, oh, there's this stuff that happened, and I'm so I've so got to go on and talk about this. This is perfect for what I've been saying. Oh, it underscores me. Oh, I can't talk about it. I'm in jail. I'm in radio jail. Radio jail. Yeah, it sucks. It, it, it really sucks. So um, every day, and people know this, I always get this, um, it's, it's, it's a Google alert. And it's uh, marijuana news. It just gives me like the top, you know, stories of the day on news. And, and, and of them, this is most captivating. Now, this is definitely not stuff that happened in the past. And I, I, I really, I... Oh, I feel so divided. I, I got the, the 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 angel on my one shoulder going. Hey, you can't talk about this segment right now because uh, this isn't what you said you were going to talk about. This is something you want to talk about later. But there's only ten minutes in that last little uh, seven minutes in that last little segment. You got to talk about that later. And then I got the devil on my shoulder going. Ah, the hell with it. Just tell him what you want to say. It's right there in front of you. Don't do it anymore. And so I got this going on. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at me like, what the F? <laughs> Just do it. So maybe we'll talk. I know, I feel like, I, the reason is because I feel like i got to talk about these things that happened, but I'm, I don't have a list. So maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Maybe we'll talk about the shit that happened the last couple of months. Because it's, some of it's really important and needs to be gone through. So that thing there, right in front of your face? Yeah. Read it. Oh, I'm going to do it. So in today's news... <clears throat> Of the top two stories on the Google search it was the same, just from, you know, syndicated from different places. Uh, this was a story, I believe, originally by the Associated Press, uh, published yesterday. Um, Uruguay marijuana growers compete in cannabis cup. Now you said you said Uruguay. Yeah. Okay. Uruguay. Okay. Did I say that weird? I mean, I, I thought it sounded weird. Uruguay. What? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Uruguay. Uruguay. What? what did you call me? <laughs> 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 <coughs> 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 
No, so, um... No more blunts for you, man. No. I'm fine. Slowing you down. Slowing me down. Nothing slows me down. Uh, uh, this is from Montevideo, Uruguay. Uruguay? There you go. That's way better. Uruguay? Uruguay. Uruguay. Like, as, Uruguay. If, as if you were calling me a guay. Okay. A guay? Like <laughs> a guay what? I don't know, but that's how you pronounce it. You're a guay. So, from Montevideo, Uruguay. There you go. Uh, Uruguay is home to the world's first government-related national marketplace for pot, so it's not surprising that growers have a competition for best marijuana. At the Cannabis Cup over the weekend, a panel of regional experts judged entries for aroma, flavor, effects, and strength before picking the winners of the best indoor and outdoor crops. Silver cups were awarded to the winners, such as uh, Guillermo, uh, this guy's name is Guillermo uh, a- a- Armandola, Armandola uh, who won in the self-grown outdoor crop category. Uh, the, as the competitors, all of them received a jar with samples of uh, from others in the tournament and were allowed to taste some of the finest pot in the South African country. Uh, the contest was held in Montevideo at a private building where bands played rock music. Now, see, I didn't know about this. I knew nothing about this. This is something that happened that it got arranged and put together and got pulled off while I was off in civil court going talking about a dog somewhere. Does that hurt your feelings? It does. I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, just look, it, I'm it, so connected to the guys at the Cannabis Cup. I mean, you know... I mean, if it makes you feel any better, none of us... I mean, I'm sure nobody working the 9 to 5 has paid much attention to all the Cannabis Cups going on in Uruguay. See, when I, when I read this, this story's headline, I thought that this was talking about they were judging cannabis from Uruguay at one of these state cups. Oh, we're talking as if uh, Uruguay made its way into a, a U.S. Cannabis Cup. Right. Type so. okay. that's because the that's the only ones outside of the ones that were held in the Netherlands and no longer are being held there. There, there was That was the original World Cannabis Cup was in the Netherlands. And then in Amsterdam. Yeah. And then um, they uh, moved it last year to Jamaica because the Netherlands is increasingly becoming less friendly to the whole tourism thing on the cannabis culture. They didn't mind it so much when the locals, it was just part of the locals thing, but when people started touring in, and, and blo- especially when the Cannabis Cup was there, the, the locals didn't like it because... The, locals the, only, man. The, well, they were pissed because the only way you could get the cannabis to kind of have access to it in, in a broad way was going to these coffee shops. And the coffee shops were filled with tourists who would leave. So you couldn't go get any cannabis while the Cannabis Cup was in town because all the tourists were there uh, plugging up the gateway. And I could see how the locals would get kind of you know, tawdry about that. I mean, it's the same thing as, uh, you know, local surfers and their beaches, man, their secret spots. You know, local skaters and their secret spots. I well, mean, no, it's really just like this influx of people just at this one yeah, time that I'd, just F's up the whole yeah, local that's, that's game. Saying. You know? I'd, really, I'd really be angry if, uh, you Like, know, if you couldn't go down to the, get to the grocery store to get what you normally get in your daily routine because I mean, everybody yeah, else is there and it would take you two hours to get through the grocery store. Um, I mean, you're definitely not as passionate about getting the groceries. So you're not, well, every time when it comes to town once a year, you're like, ah, F. i got to deal with this now for like a week straight. It's only a three-day event or something, but if the, the day surrounding it, people are coming and going, and it's still mucking things up. Because really the local economy, there is, uh, the, the, the infrastructure is not designed to handle that kind of influx in tourism traffic. So it really kind of can see how it would be very irritating. But they've taken us. It's, that's not why they, they did something with this. The, the people who are running, the, their, their political system over there allowed for a lot of other people in other areas in, in, that aren't in Amsterdam that are still part of the Netherlands government um, be taken over by like very conservative wings, many of them Islamic wings. Um, so um, it's, it's a much more conservative place now politically. So they've, they've changed some rules and, and started to be unfriendly to the Canvas Cup. And so Canvas Cup heard the message loud and clear and said, F you, we're out of here to Jamaica. Bye-bye. We'll be well excited. We do there. not need you Netherlands. No, we do not. So um, the, the, the Jamaican government was very welcome and open to this. How much time do we got? 44 to yeah, 47. I don't know. We got like five minutes or less, like three minutes. So um, four minutes, something. I can't do math today. So uh, especially in a backwards timeline, it's just weird. And, and I'm rusty, I'll admit. Um, down there in... Uruguay. No, not Uruguay. No? Jamaica. Jamaica. Uh, they, they, they opened up the, 
the cult. So first off, they started changing the laws, and 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 I think uh, the people that run the cannabis cup went down there and started friendlying up to the locals and trying to figure out what they were doing and what they weren't doing, what the government was doing, what wasn't doing. And so I think what they did was, I think the people at the Cannabis Cup, and I'm just guessing, I'm just talking off the cuff, I'm not repeating anything that's known fact. I'm just telling you what I think happened. I think they went down there and, and kind of gave them a description of what they would need to locate down there and bring tourism there. Because that's, that's how they live down there, is off tourism. Um, and the Jamaican government was open to, like, you know what, now that we're changing our view on this and it's kind of legal in the States anyways, and you guys were probably the ones that told us that we couldn't have cannabis in the long run by making us sign some treaty we didn't want to sign, but we couldn't get U.S. aid for unless we did it. That's what it came down to. Then, sure, why not? Um, as, long as, as long as we can do it and we're not going to get, you know, raided by the, you know, people with helicopters and big military guns, we're golden. So they crafted some rules around it, and the Cannabis Cup located there, and they, they did fine. And I think they're going back there this year, if I'm not mistaken. You know what I should do, and I have to do now because I think it would be irresponsible not to, now that I brought I still have to finish that story, so don't let me finish the story. But um, while I'm talking about it, I better just look up what the Cannabis Cup, uh, it's, I actually have it on the app, so why don't I just look in there? A lot easier than, like, trying to Google it on the air. Here we go. So the, uh, the, according to the app... Yeah, you got to watch that. <laughs> <coughs> so there's the uh, Rastafari Roos Fest, which is um, the Jamaica thing. And those have already happened. That happened, and then we had the SoCal Cup. We had the U.S. Cannabis Cup, NorCal Cup, which was June 17th. Uh, the Business Summit uh, was d uh, December 14th of last year. So, okay, these are going to, I'm just looking to see all these in the order that they came in. Good Lord. So, um... Let's just look under guides. Public guides see all. <sighs> That's not going to be very helpful. All right, I guess I, guess I better have just done it the other way. There we go. I think Cannabis Cup is at uh, CannabisCup.com. I, 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 I thought they were CC Cup, too, but maybe not. I it's promise Cannabis you Cup. we should get a guy for this. CannabisCup.com. Get a guy for what? Oh, see, no, we're hitting break. Hang on. Um... So you got SoCal July 22nd through 24, so that's going on, you know, like in a couple days. In August, we're back in Clio, at McGuire, Jamaica. Uh, that was in November of last year. We'll see what it is this year. NorCal is coming soon. Also, uh, Colorado is coming soon. And Southern California are coming soon. That's what the schedule is currently. I don't know where this other thing came from, but we'll find out after the break. You're getting the full melt. Promotional consideration provided by... NoSmell.com, pioneering the storage market for cannabis users. The NoSmell patented bag technology offers users 100% smell-proof detection from even the most sophisticated of noses. NoSmell.com, so nobody knows. When placing your order for a NoSmell bag, make sure to use discount code BULLMELT and take 10% off the entire order. Learn more about NoSmell technology at NoSmell.com. Young students are our future. They're eager to learn eager to succeed, eager to make the world a better place, and they want to make it to school safely. Share the road, take care when passing, and always leave three feet between you and people on bikes. Bikes are legal road vehicles. We're all drivers. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense... It's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rodoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rodoy Law at RodoyLaw.com. RodoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RodoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. We stand up with you. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? <laughs> Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the Allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. 
The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in a large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Fort Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. 571. One, two, three, four. It's the Blue Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. All right, so uh, before we went to the break, I was in the middle of telling the story about Uruguay and the cannabis company, and it surprised me because I didn't know anything about the cannabis cup going to Uruguay. And so now I'm just wondering if this story, which is originally published by uh, the Associated Press, uh, or is it just a photo? I, the, 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 the photo is from the Associated Press. Um, Confusion is in the air. Well, now, I just, now I'm just wondering. So this is from foxnews.com, so you, you always want to question the oh, source yeah. when Fox is talking about something. I'm just saying. That's my, my point of view, as editorialized on this very show. Um, so the, the thing, they talk about... Um, you know, the Cannabis Cup, it says, at the Cannabis Cup over the weekend, a panel of regional experts judged entries for aroma, flavor, effects, and strength before picking the winners of the best indoor and outdoor crops. It sounds exactly like what the Cannabis Cup would do. Yet I didn't see it anywhere reflected in the stuff that I just looked up live on the air while we were talking about, oh, wait a minute, what are the events? Uh, let's at least go look there and see what they are, uh, instead of just letting it dangle out there. Uh, let's nail it down and figure out what it is. I should have done this before the show. Obviously. But, it's um, okay, guys. First time back, I promise you. Better, better game tomorrow. I told you, Rust. We'll tight, we'll tighten up the game. Rust. Um, the abs will do you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, silver cups were awarded to the winners, such as this one guy who, who won the self-grown outdoor crop category. All the competitors received a jar with samples. With, uh, with others in the tournament. See, now that does not sound like something that would happen at a normal cannabis cup. I've never seen them do that before. Uh, these guys all got a sample of everybody else that entered. Yeah, right? and played them, played the judge. Well, then they the could just, like, t- yeah. check for themselves to see how they compared in, in that you know, lineup because you actually had the product in front of you. Whereas the cannabis cups that I've attended, so this, this makes me wonder as to what this quote-unquote cannabis cup, who was running this quote-unquote cannabis cup, it might just be a trademark infringer. Makes you want to go check it out. Well, I should ask the guys, the, the powers that be. I'm going to call the people at the, at, the, at the High Times Cannabis Cup and ask them. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm sure I can get a, a straight-up answer for them pretty quickly. And, and look, I'm going to have to because we're going to be at the Cannabis Cup in Clio. Coming up in August, um, uh, I can go back over that here in a minute. I, I wanted to wrap this up, and you wanted to talk about a, uh, another story that I think is important, too. Um, so this contest was held at a private building where bands played rock music while competitors smoked joints and vendors uh, sold food and marijuana paraphernalia. Alcohol was banned. See, no, and, and there's only a, that's a, great, a, a little that's, bit more to the story, but again, it does not sound like a traditional cannabis cup that to me. That sounds like a fine one to me, man. It sounds like a, a, a fun event, but it doesn't sound like the Cannabis Cup that I know, that I've been to many of in this state and other, at least in other. Well, I mean, hats off to whoever got the trophy for uh, growing, growing the best outdoor crop in Africa, man. That's no easy feat. Right. <laughs> so um, then it just goes on to say that Uruguay legalized the cultivation and sale of marijuana in 2013 in an effort to fight rising homicide and crime rates associated with drug trafficking. The law allows the growing of pot by licensed individuals, the formation of growers and users clubs, and the sale by pharmacies of 40 grams of marijuana a month to registered users. Um, I think all of the other criminal stuff has been like reduced to just like show up in court and explain yourself. Do you need some drug treatment? Because we'll send you there, and, and we'll get you a job. I mean, that's how they do this now. 
It's a great proposition. It's way better than spending your money in the industrial prison complex and taking people's rights away and treating them like caged animals over, over something like a, a drug use or a drug abuse problem. Um, because there's a huge difference. The difference is when you're doing the drug or when the drug's doing you. And when the drug starts doing you, that's when you start looking at options about how to get out of that terrible loop. But um, if, if you're just doing the drug and nobody else is the worst for it, uh, really, who's to say? Uh, that's my point of view. Nothing. I, I, I mean, I, I think it's a shared point of view. I don't couple things come to mind when you say that. A couple of phrases I've heard in my life. Like, oh, a little cocaine never killed anybody. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I guess, I mean, like, well, a, wait a little, minute. No, a no, that's not bit. a true statement. <laughs> I, think, I think a little bit. Like, what, what a, little, a literal, logical uh, no, 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 human no, no, being. Even a little bit of cocaine will kill some people. Then, so, don't say drugs are... No, don't tell me people can just do drugs and they're fine. Don't, I'm don't just say saying, that. you know, it's a self-fulfilling problem solver. You know, I mean, I, mean I, I like to think that a little bit of anything didn't kill any everything. I mean, you ever hear the saying, uh, "Everything's good in moderation." Well, for sure, and I, I agree with that. But I'm just saying, for the people who can't figure that out, no, I, I just if you can't figure that out, don't do drugs. That's where I'm. Oh, at. for sure. But there's what about the people who did anyways? And I know they're ter- that's stuck in this terrible place. That, that's a problem. I don't figure that out. Call a lawyer. I don't know. Call a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got some bucks to bail yourself out. Yeah. Um, I'm looking for this other story that we wanted to talk about, and I think it might have been from another day. I think it might have been from, like... I mean, the only time marijuana's ever made me angry is when it doesn't dry fast enough. <laughs> the only marijuana problem I've ever had is not having enough. Um, that, that's, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you, <laughs> do you need some? <laughs> that's a good answer. I, I like that answer. Uh, this is a story from. The, this is one of the stories that I wanted to talk about. Those in the you know days past in the. Yeah. What past. what is that? Is that uh, in the Detroit News? New study: Marijuana affects brains reward center. This was in the Detroit News, um, like a couple days ago, July seventeenth. Brains reward center. Explain that to me. Wee-hee. I mean, that's what all drugs titillate is oh. the brains reward center. So you're high in some way. Oh. Must be high because your brain says, "Yeah, you're high." He high. I think my brain says I'm high. Um, and then there's other, there's other story about you know marijuana activists still outspoken from county jail. This is a guy that uh, ran around helping. Um, he's a mar- marijuana caregiver and patient in the community, and and he did a lot of work in rolling up his sleeves and getting local initiatives done in different cities all around southeastern Michigan in the Detroit area. And they busted him for some illegal pot sale, and so he pled guilty to it, and that was a big... St- and he, now he's doing jail time for it, and he's still speaking out from jail about medical pot, which that's what the story's about. Well, guys, uh, let it be noted, if you are a medical card holder, only uh, do your business with your patients and other medical card holders. Is, uh, Andrew, is it Andrew Sisco? Is that the guy's name? I don't know. i got to look it up. Um, I, I, that's from memory. Let me just look it real quick. Um... Andrew Sis- uh, Sissel, not Sisco, it's Sissel, of Oak Park, serving 90 days in the Oakland County Jail. Poor Andrew. I'm sorry, Andrew. Uh, send Andrew some commissary. Yeah. Call the Oakland oh, County oh, Jail. Oh, find oh, out. Oh, find yeah. out. It's in Andrew Sissel, C-I-S-S-E-L-L. Uh, send him some commissary. That's what he needs to happen. Um, but uh, the, you, you wanted to talk about, we got a couple minutes if I can find the darn story because I just can't find it now. Uh, this was about uh, me, the first uh, dispensary opening up in Florida. Um, I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna do is just Google that outright. Um, I mean, some of the facts that you pointed out was that it was more or less just CBD oils, kind of, you know, more for the kids having seizures, more, more straight medical, not you know. Well, the Florida medical marijuana program is limited to oil for basically that purpose. And I mean, um, I just I think that's big in that in that state. So this story came out seven hours ago. Let me let me go ahead and get it out because we're going to run out of time if I don't. This is from Tall- Tallahassee. This is a WCTV reporting this story. A Tallahassee medical marijuana dispensary is the first in the state of Florida to receive authorization from the Florida Department of Health. True Leaf Dispensary says it will open next week and begin sales, becoming the first dispensary in the state of Florida to open its doors. Uh, the company has been a press has has a press conference scheduled for its location at 800 Capital Circle Southeast next to Tuesday at 2 p.m. We are happy to announce that we have passed all inspections from growing and processing to dispensing, and they are 
the very first medical cannabis provider in the state to receive these formal authorizations. And we're most excited to get this much anticipated medicine to the patients of Florida, said CEO, uh, True Relief, True Relief uh, CEO Kim Rivers. True Relief will have low THC cannabis available for statewide delivery immediately, the company says. Medical marijuana with higher levels of THC is expected to be available in August. And that's the story. And higher higher THC levels available in August Damn. in Florida. Thumbs up. Uh, it's, 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 it's not just for the hippies anymore. You got the old folks and them Jewish people coming down there in the wintertime, too. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.